So what advice would you have for somebody who's sitting at home right now thinking, I'm not happy, mm -hmm. whether it's in my relationship or my career, like where do you start? Do we need a therapist or do we need a life coach? Well, they say that, you know, the, the biggest transformations come from the biggest trauma. That's why I'm asking you. No, I believe your words were, if this isn't, if this isn't for you, you can kick rocks. <laughs> See, I love that even more. You guys are actually the first people I'm talking to about this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I... Welcome to the second episode of the AD20 podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, Georgia Sinclair, along with... Shanina Shai. And today we are blessed to have a beautiful guest in the studio. Her name is Nazanin Mandy. She's a transformational life coach and actress. Welcome to the pod, Nazanin. Thank you, ladies, for having me. In. Oh, my God. I was very, very, very excited about this. Very excited. Yes. I'm so happy to have you Because we've here. known each other for a while. A while. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah I, I love how our paths have crossed and... We only like, I think today's era, you only connect and stay connected through Instagram because we're all very busy. Yes. But um, at the same time, we're like seeing our lives grow. And I love that you've added this new, you know, uh, job career yeah. as transformational life coach. Yeah. It's um, something that I feel was a long time coming, but a very natural transition, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, I've always loved to motivate others through experience or things that I believed in um, over the years. And I started doing that on Instagram years ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I think it was one of my only ways to like truly authentically connect with people. And it started really resonating and people were responding and DMing and asking questions. And I was like, you know, there's feels, this feels fulfilling. Like mm -hmm. it fulfills the soul. And it lit a fire within me. And I, I told one of my personal trainers about my reactions I was getting and the things I believed in. And she's like, that sounds like a, a life coach. And I was like, oh, I didn't even think of that. Like, that mm. wasn't even something in my, I was just going to write a book, to be honest with you. I was just like, maybe I should write a book of things that I believe in and or quotes that I've written. Just, I wanted to put some type of literature out, really was the goal. Yeah. And um, she's like, would you ever think of getting certified? And I was like, you know what, if I'm gonna do this, like I wanna be legit and I wanna educate myself and pass on my education to others. Uh, so that's what I did. And I went and I got certified. I started my own platform. It's a three-tier membership um, platform. It's called Ubloom. We launched in November of last year and it's just really taken off and I'm so grateful for it. Ah, it's, congratulations. Thank you. What thank an incredible you. achievement. Yeah, yeah, it's something that I don't know, it, it really fulfills the soul. I your soul. Yeah, 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 it's, I don't know, it's something that I know will stick with me forever. It's not just a here it's, today, gone tomorrow. No, it's who you are. Yeah, yeah. Amazing, and yeah. for those people listening who don't know what a transformational life coach is, what is a transformational life coach? I mean, I can take you from A to Z. Let's say you're having issues figuring out the next steps in life. You know, you are trying to figure out what you want to be. Let's say you work a nine to five, but you're trying to find something that feeds your soul. Mm -hmm. Let's help you find what that is. What is your purpose? Why are you here? Um, I can help you with that. I can help you with day to day issues. You know, this is I can help you with your schedule. I can help you with keeping you accountable when it comes to getting anything done in your life. I mean, it really depends on what you are looking for as a client. Do we need a therapist or do we need a life coach? Do you know what? I just talked to somebody it's about this. It's a great this. question. No, <laughs> that question is incredible. Um, I just spoke to somebody about this. He grew up going to therapy. Mm. And he said it never really resonated with him. He always felt uncomfortable. And then he got a life coach. And he was like, that was my fit. Yeah. He was like, you know, I found what worked for me. So I feel like answering your question, I think it just depends on what resonates with you. You know, it's, it's you know, uh, uh, being a therapist, it can be very clinical. Mm -hmm. But if you respond to that, you respond to that. A life coach, I'm gonna come to your house, we're gonna Zoom, I'm gonna write lists, I'm gonna keep you accountable. We talk probably every day. I want a life coach. Yeah, I want one too. <laughs> I, I, I do too as well. Uh, sign like, me up. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it depends how close you want somebody mm -hmm. in your life. 
Mm -hmm. um, and how accountable you want to be held. Yeah. Really. Okay. Yeah. What is what do you think is the most common question that you receive being a transformational life coach? How can I find my purpose? Wow. Ooh. Yes. And how can we find our purpose? Oh, I mean, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we can be here all day. <laughs> George, oh I'm going to get a session right now. <laughs> how can you find your purpose? I mean, the best way to answer it is really by example and how I found mine. You yeah. know, it's it's about finding what fuels your soul mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Um, finding something that you're going to wake up in the morning and be really proud about and happy about. Um, it's not going to be easy. You know, finding your purpose is not an easy task. Mm -hmm. Maintaining your purpose is even harder. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people think like, oh, I got the dream job or I, I found my purpose and life is going to be amazing and easy and simple. And it's just simply not. You know, everything takes work. Yeah. Everything worth it, everything that creates longevity takes work oh, and consistency, you know, <laughs> and that's just really the name of the game at the end of the day. So there's many ways to find your purpose, but I would start with what is lighting that fire within you? Mm -hmm. What are the things you truly love? What brings you joy? What brings you joy that can bring others joy? That's really important. Like, I love to see other people happy. Yeah. Like, that makes me so happy. If I can pass on knowledge and see people smile and thrive, I've done my job, end of day. So would you say that's what fuels you, mm -hmm. seeing other people happy? Yeah, like I'm a natural nurturer. Um, I love to give back. I remember the little things with people. So like gift giving is one of my like love languages. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. something that I've, I've always done that. Um, seeing other people genuinely smile is like, I don't know what it, it just makes me so it's happy. It's infectious. Yes. Yeah. yeah. A genuine smile is infectious. And that's what fuels you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's mm -hmm. why you're doing it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I think it's something so beautiful about, you know, just bringing life and joy into someone's world and mm -hmm. receiving it. Right. And it's also really hard to be authentically yourself, I think, in today's oh, world. Oh, yeah. And a daily battle. Yeah. It's a daily battle. Yeah. It, you have to fight. Isn't that crazy? You have to fight to be yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's true. It's it so is. true, and it's crazy. Um, we're constantly influenced. Yeah. If we're aware of it or not. You know, we're scrolling. Mm -hmm. And we're like, do we need that? That person has that. And they look happy. Yeah. Do mm -hmm. I need that? Yeah. You most likely don't. You know? I feel very triggered right now. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm going through a real shopping trigger? stage where, you know, I'm just seeing all this lovely stuff on Instagram going, I think I need that. But Aren't we all? <laughs> it's, oh my God. I trust me. I'm Especially I can be, Instagram. Yeah. Oh. I, there's times where I, you know, it's part of my job and also for you, yeah. and you know this as well. Mm -hmm. It's like to be on an Instagram, to scroll, to see what's, you know, what is the teasers of like to content compare yourself. Right. and comparing ourselves. And I find like you come to situations where, you know, you look at, and my girlfriends know this, it's like, I'm like, oh, I wish I was doing that job or, you know, I wish mm -hmm. I could be there. And it kind of like, yeah. you know, puts a hole in your heart a little bit. And then there's mm -hmm. times where I've had to like put it, my Instagram on a different screen because mentally it's just, it's not fueling me. It's not, yeah. like, not doing good for me. It's not. And that's why it's so important to be aware of who you choose to follow as well. Do you have a rule with your clients on social media? Not necessarily. Um, my clients, they interact, but they're also, I don't know, there's something they understand the line of professionalism. Yeah. It's kind of unspoken. Mm -hmm. um, it, that might change over the years. You know, everybody's different. But so far, so good. Okay. I haven't had any, you know, anyone try to overstep. Or yeah. I've also, and I'm very grateful for this, I've never had a client... Um, question who I am in my image oh wow. yeah. so you know modeling my modeling obviously you know is, it's mostly swimwear and beauty and it's I can say why oh thank you thank you <laughs> a lot of a lot of people <laughs> would not group life coaching and like a swimwear model yeah you know and you can be judged for that and it's it's not the most it wasn't the most comfortable thought for me in the beginning I thought I had to choose one or the other it's interesting that you say that because mm. I don't see that at all when I look at you or your Instagram. Really? I just see a really accomplished, inspiring, Thanks. beautiful woman. So it makes total sense to me that you're a life coach Thank because you. your life from the outside seems very aspirational. Thank you. Mm. And I wanted to ask you, I mean, what was your upbringing like? Like how did you get mm. to this point 
and level of success. Where did you start out? You know, I come from a very strong family. Um, both my parents are very, very hardworking. Um, I grew up acting and modeling and singing, and a lot had to do with my mother. She encouraged it fully, you know, and, and let that. me be who I wanted to be. And, you know, anything I wanted to do, she, she made it happen. And I wasn't the only child in the family. I have three younger brothers. So she had her hands full. Wow. wow. Um, <laughs> but they always made something happen for us. So I came from a very strong family unit. I came from a family that encouraged us to be who we wanted to be. Um, You're very lucky because yeah. a lot very. of people no. don't have that privilege growing up. Um, absolutely. absolutely. A lot of people are told, you know, go the safe route. Yeah. You know, to, go with your plan B, not your plan Ex A. Exactly. You know? And my mom was never that. Well, parents she have was, a plan for you. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of your parents like, you will be this, yeah. and this is what I see for you, mm -hmm. and you didn't have that. No, I didn't have that. Um, my father is Iranian, and, he, you know, the grades are very important. Education is very important, so that was also very important to me as well. Um, I had to remain a national honor roll student in order to act, in order to model, and to, in order to sing. So that was the rule. I had to have amazing grades in order to pursue what I wanted to pursue. Same. I yes. Have to do the same. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, I'm so glad they did that. Yes. So important. I, oh my gosh. It taught me hard work, multitasking, time management, um, discipline, ba everything. Balance. Yes, balance. And it's, it's something that I know I'll one day pass on to my children. Um, but these were the things that they instilled in me that are my roots. You know, and I'm, again, so grateful for it. I wanted to circle back a little bit because you touched on something before. You said you've just got to start. Yeah. And I, f I feel like you have already ticked off a lot of boxes. I mean, you've Thank written you. a book. I did. So my very first book is called The Art of Gratitude. Lovely. And thank you. Love that and title. Thank yeah. you. Thank <laughs> you. It's, um, it's a mix of a gratitude journal, a workbook, my story, and quotes that I've written. There's a quote for like every day. Oh, wow. And it's something I wrote. I feel like you'd be very good at captions if you can write quotes. I, I love, <laughs> I am. I, I, yeah. I'm very, most of the time pleased with my captions, yep. but it doesn't mean I don't overthink them. Right. Yeah. And take my time and like put some work into it. Um, but the book is something that I wrote during quarantine and it was motivated by a time in my life where I was trying to find myself and my purpose, I just turned 30. And you know 30 will like yeah, wake you up. I, I, have you heard of Saturn Returns? Yeah, of course. Oh yeah. my God. Like that, is that 27 to 30? 27 to 30. Uh -huh. And I connect with you on this in so many ways. When I was, um, I was looking at your previous interviews and I was like, wow, I know exactly what she's talking about. And Saturn Returns, if no one knows what Saturn Returns is, it's 27 to 30 years of Saturn Returns back into your life after the time you were born. And it's about mm -hmm. leaving childhood and coming into adulthood. And it's a different age for everybody else. Right. For me, it was 28, 29. I just like got, div I was getting divorced. I was moving. I like had no partner. I like, I was sounding from ground zero mm -hmm. and I was like what is going on so like was this happening for you yes in a different way um but it's now now that you've mentioned it now it's all connected mm -hmm. um mine in my 27 to 30 age range was discovering my purpose and not letting fear stop me anymore that's where I was at I was tired of living in the shadows. I was tired of not putting myself first. Mm. I was tired of not putting my talents out there. You know, I grew up acting, I grew up singing, and I felt, always felt like something was missing my entire 20s, because I always loved to be on stage. I loved to be in front of the camera. And when that's a part of who you are, like at a soul level, mm -hmm. and you're not doing it, it, you feel defeated. I can't even describe it. Yep. Um, so all through my 20s, I felt that way. Yeah. And I got so sick of it. You mentioned uh, that you were tired of living in the shadows. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope you don't mind me mentioning this. You've, you've been through a divorce. Yeah. 
What was the biggest takeaway you got from that experience? Ooh, I mean, there's there's so many. <laughs> we can relate. Just, Don't worry. Yes, yes we've also <laughs> been through. I'll one. guide you through this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, they say that you know the, the biggest transformations come from the biggest trauma. That's why I'm asking you. Like those. That's yes. when we really get to know ourselves and learn the lessons. You know, one of the biggest things that came out of that situation for me was boundaries. Oh wow. Mm. I. I didn't realize the lack of boundaries that I had or didn't have um, throughout really my 20s and and almost to mid 30s. Um, That was something I really actually internally beat myself up for for a long time. Mm. I, I felt guilty about not having boundaries. I felt sorry for that little Nas that let those things happen. Oh, wow. and, and I was beating myself up for it for the longest. I recently actually just got over it. Just forgiving yourself recently. Yeah, I have forgiven myself for not, for the lack of boundaries and for enabling things that I should not have enabled. So it's, it's they're all learning lessons and um, I take accountability. And you know, there's, we're, we were so young. Yeah, it's a, you learning, know, it's it's learning, a curve. learning curve. And um, yeah, boundaries was a big one. I feel like now I am not afraid to say what I want. Um, I'm not afraid to say what I don't want. I'm not afraid to say I don't accept that behavior. That's yeah. not for me. It sounds easy, but it's not. And no. I feel like we all struggle with it. And you don't really learn how to set a boundary until mm-hmm. you realize you don't have any. Yeah. How do you set yeah. a boundary for someone that's in a relationship? Oh, how I think just out the gate being as honest and transparent as possible. Um, I know for me, making it very clear that this is a safe space to be authentically yourself um, and to be as transparent and honest as possible because that is the foundation for me. Like we, we need honesty across the board, even if it's hard to be honest, if it's hard to tell me something, I need honesty, that is the foundation. I think that's so important why I ask her. It's like I have a, and Georgia knows this, I have an issue with setting boundaries mm-hmm. in my own, and not just like love relationships, just in general. Uh-huh. I love you, but yes, you do. <laughs> 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 not to call you out or anything, yeah. Shanina, but. <laughs> boundary. It's <laughs> okay. We, we I'm all Shanina Shack and I have boundary issues. <laughs> She's just so I, sweet. I'm you know? Nasneen Mandy and I used to too, so don't worry. <laughs> I'm Georgia Sinclair and I also have boundary See? issues. <laughs> all have boundary issues it's hard to set a boundary and I'm really glad you spoke about that because that's why I asked her but I think also with me I'm very caring like caring and nurturing Mm -hmm. but I think I have this side of a fear of being let down Mm -hmm. I was saying someone saying no I don't like that and not like working out and I don't know how to deal with it Mm -hmm. fear of rejection fear of rejection and I think we a lot of women I think submissive to a man to do that Mm -hmm. to want to appease and just love and nurture and just like okay I can deal with this but I'm I can relate to you in that situation because when I just met and he he won't care that I'll say this but when I've met my um now recent partner uh, my boyfriend when I met him I told him exactly what I wanted Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. I was like if this is not what I I get or receive or Mm -hmm. this is what I would see for my future and it's not for you as well Mm -hmm. I would suggest that you move on no I believe your words were if this isn't if this isn't for you you can kick rocks (laughs) (laughs) see I love that even more yeah because that's who you are that's authentically I love it yes authentically you can kick rocks I love and now we're here with a baby see okay so I'm on the right track guys okay (laughs) no but he knows that so see um, I love that I love that and I'm really proud of you for yeah out of it's you. Not, thank you. That's it's not like, easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. And going back to your comment about rejection, mm-hmm. that's very deep. Um, I've dealt with that as well. We come from a world mm-hmm. where we are constantly being judged. If that's for work, um, social media, it's like when you grow up in like the modeling world, our our life and our livelihood and our, our paycheck depends on people accepting us mm. for the job. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's so deeply rooted. Yeah, it's it's deep. I feel like we're even judged for aging. 
oh, as women. Oh, my God. It, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm in my 30s. But I've always amazing. been... amazing. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but I've, I've always been quite cautious of talking about my age uh-huh. in public or posting it online, really? not because I feel any shame around my age whatsoever. Uh-huh. Um, I'm quite proud of my age. You I actually love it. Thank you. I actually <laughs> yeah. love my 30s because I feel like I really came into myself. I went through my certain returns <laughs> and I really came into myself in my 30s uh-huh. and I, I feel just so much more empowered and in control of my life. I love that. Um, but... On the flip side, I feel like people are judged, especially women, for aging. They are. Yeah, yeah it's um, we have this immense amount of pressure to remain young, to be perfect. Yeah, you know, and whatever that is, and it and it's different in different cultures, right? The standard right. of beauty is different in all over the world. Yeah, you know, so that's another a layer on top of it. Um, but yeah, uh, aging's a huge one. Yeah, you know it's um, man, it it's pressure in ways that I don't think men will ever really understand. Well, no, because they all age like fine wines. So they don't <laughs> yeah. really get. Yeah, and, and by the way, so do we. But you know, it's it's more acceptable. I feel like for them to get the gray hairs and yes, the, the beard and the wrinkles. But and if look we at, have yeah. it, oh god, no, yeah. we're fall- we're yeah. we're not taking care of ourselves, yeah. right? They don't like that's us getting Botox, it's but not. they don't realize I, that that's the only way to keep the wrinkles at bay. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. I yeah the the pressures that we have as women to have children at a certain age yeah. to not age um to carry ourselves a certain way to be married yes to be yeah. married um i mean there's just so it's so much it's a lot um you said something really interesting earlier that i wanted to touch on and i was so excited to ask you this question i didn't mean to cut you off mm. when i did uh, but you said that you'd managed to reach a place where you're both still healing mm-hmm. and open to love I can't relate to that, to be honest at all, because every time, I mean, I, I'm very open about the fact that I have diagnosed severe uh, OCD mm-hmm. and, uh, and ADHD, but especially with OCD, when I go through a breakup, what happens is that I might have emotionally moved through the breakup, but I get caught in thought loops, which is a, which is a big OCD trait. Oh, that's so interesting. So I'm constantly thinking about what went wrong, what I could have done differently. And I, it just goes on and on and on, and it makes it really, really difficult to heal. Wow. So I'm wondering how you managed to reach a place where you're, you've both healed and you're open to something new. Because for me, I find it's like one or the other. That's just the way my brain works. Mm-hmm. Honestly, faith. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I got to a point where, and this isn't the only thing, um, you know, therapy obviously was a huge factor in this. Um, I feel like a lot of people do it without therapy. So They do. They absolutely do. Yeah. Um, but so the fact that you're you're saying, well, obviously, no, I feel like that's a, that's a wonderful choice that you made. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm, I'm a huge advocate for therapy. Again, whatever works for you. You know, it can be life coaching therapy. It can be both. Um, or none of none of the above. A lot of people can heal and process on their own, and that's perfectly okay. I feel like that's harder, though. Like it I, is harder. It yeah. is harder, and I think it's harder for people that internalize. Mm. You know, if you're not the kind of person who can sit with your friends and get things out, and you internalize all of your your fear and your and your heartache, it's going to be harder to process and get over, and it's going to take longer. Um, but again, finding what's right for you is, is the best thing to do. Um, but for me, therapy yep. got me to this place, understanding my worth. That's a big one. Yeah, that's a big I feel one. like everybody Gosh. struggles with yeah. that. I've how had, do yes. you, how do you, how do you get to that place? Like, how do you realize your worth? Mm-hmm. What's the process? The boundaries plays a huge role in it. Ooh, okay. boundaries worth. Uh huh. They're all connected. Yeah. So what will I put up with? What will I accept? What will I not accept? That's going to fuel my worth. That's going to empower me. Yeah. So it's all intertwined. Should we write a list? Yes, we should write <laughs> a list of this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Like you know, write a list. Like I, I think when you see things on a list, it mm-hmm. puts things into perspective Absolutely. of what you need to do. Like put having it in your head because you can just. Like Georgia go through a loop of things and like, oh yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. But oh, I couldn't survive without lists. Yeah. I, I have that. to write I like I, I my lists are ridiculous. I write Good. wake up, 
feed dog. Like, because that's it's not just ridiculous. The way my brain works. <laughs> no, it's not. No. But that's what works for you. Yes. I get tiny it's little great. dopamine hits whenever I tick something off. I know. <laughs> no, but I it, love it. It does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It really does. It brings clarity. Level. Yeah. No, absolutely. It, the amount of clarity a list can bring you. That's why I'm such an advocate for that. Yeah. Um, with my clients, I'm like, we're going to start with a list because you guys need to see what you want, what you don't want, and where you're going. Okay. Oh, I'm going to be really honest. Yeah, okay. I'm really honest. I'm going to have some tea. Ooh. Um, <laughs> I was talking about this the other day. Um, T.A. is ma. <laughs> uh, um, talking about lists. Uh-huh. So one of the revelations that I had, why I decided to part ways with my, my partner, my ex-partner, mm-hmm. um, was I was told to write down a list and write a list of things that you are looking for your ideal partner, mm-hmm. not just in that individual that you have right now. Mm-hmm write down a list of what you like what you see in a partner like your ideal guy girl whatever it may be and then tick off or cross off what they're not doing Ooh. and oh and <laughs> when you look at that list and say you need to question okay is that person for me it obviously took a lot of time to get there but right. it's a very eye opening and oh this is a this is an amazing exercise it's an amazing it's Amazing to, and confronting. Very oh, confronting. Yeah. You yeah. have to be brave, but I, I think I have that list on my phone somewhere. I actually do have it. Uh, you kept it? Shall yeah. we pull it out? <laughs> I'm kidding. She was like, okay, this is what no, it is. This is where I make all my notes. But oh that was lists do. They're very trans- – like they transform your life yeah, in so do. many ways. And it was yeah. very confronting. And from that list, I remember I was on the plane and I wrote that list and I was crying my eyes oh. out. And I just knew that this is not working. We're not working as a whole and I need to make a decision. But um, Isn't it crazy when you just know, when it hits you? Yes. Oh, I'll I'm, never forget that. I, I really like, for me, it was, I was going against what I needed to do. And my body, my body was also reacting to the stress. That was me. That was you? As what, they say, what? the body keeps the score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, hap- what happened to you? I was getting very weird reactions for a series of about three months. Wow. So I was getting hives. I had chronic migraines for like four years. I know this was, wow. yeah. Um, my lip, I started to have an allergic reaction and my top lip would blow up out of nowhere. Um, I would get, my eye would get swollen. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, and I had totally missed it, for like two years, I got COVID. Yeah. And I was like, my immune system, like, this is something is not right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was like back to back to back to back. And, you know, you just know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's about listening mm-hmm. and seeing the signs that you need to do something. Yeah, that's, that's, I knew I was internalizing my thoughts and my pain. Wow. So what advice would you have for somebody who's sitting at home right now Mm -hmm. thinking, I'm not happy, Mm -hmm. whether it's in my relationship or my career? Like, where do you start? How do you start to unravel it all? Why are you not happy? What is the why? Yep. What is the why? I would start with the why. Um, And then what you need to do to become happy. Mm. I have recently started to live a solutions-based life. Oh, I love that. Yeah, And it's something I'm going to talk more about. I'm going to write about it. You guys are actually the first people I'm talking to about this. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) About a month ago, I I was thinking about things that I wasn't happy about. and, And they were deep things and not so deep things. And I'm like, you know what? Everything, if I choose has a solution. I'm not stuck. Isn't that interesting? Because, like, uh, I mean, I'm sure everybody can relate to this. You sometimes get in a rut in your life where you think, I'm helpless. Yes. And you throw up the white flag. And you're saying that's never the case. (laughs) It's something if you choose to. Right. And it's, it was like, I don't, it was like a light bulb for me, and it's so simple. Like, I'm not stuck. Right? Mm. I can pivot at any time if I choose to. So how do I pivot? My example, and this is what sparked it, and I'll share it with you guys. Um, I bought a home 
Oh, congratulations. In, thank you, yeah. in December. And it's a fairly large home, and it's just me living in it. And it was magnifying the divorce, mm. and it was making me very sad because I'm used to a home full of people and music and noise and right. animals and constantly. Like, our door was a revolving door of people. Yeah. And I grew up that way. I grew up in a big family. So it was really magnifying my loneliness, and I was like, I got to do something about this. Mm. I don't want to sell the house. You know, this is my first home I bought. What do I do? And I, I had a breakdown. I cried because I was like, oh, my God. Like, I feel so overwhelmed. And I called my cousin, of course. And she was like, why don't you just lease the home? Like, you're not stuck there. <laughs> And, and that was the anyway, the, the oh, idea. But. Yeah, and it's I mean, so simple. It sounds really oh. simple, but but there's a lot of emotion involved in that. Yes, there's yeah. a lot of emotion involved because one, it was my first home, you know, and I didn't want to feel like I was caving in to my loneliness. My loneliness, mm. like I can beat this. Like, did you feel like that was weak? Yes. yes. Mm. And you know what? And I, I told my cousin that, and she goes, you're leading with your ego, and you need to stop that. Yeah. Wow, your cousin. Sounds oh, like we no, need to get your amazing. cousin on the She's podcast. amazing. <laughs> so she's, oh, my God. She's, like, next level. She's like, no, 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 that's your ego. Wow. Put your ego down. You still own the house. It's but like admitting like, defeat. People don't mm-hmm. want to admit defeat. People, don't admit, people don't want to admit when they're wrong. Or, exactly. I'm not saying you're wrong, but yeah. like it's just. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it is all about perspective, isn't yeah. it? I mean, yeah. nobody else would look at you and think you were weak. They would look at you and say, that makes sense. It's just Ex- you. Exactly. Yeah. So you should get a smaller place and, and, may, and you know, pay off your mortgage a bit faster or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But it was. It's about not judging yourself. Exactly. Yeah. And I needed somebody to be like, okay, hello. And so that sparked my thought process and motivation to now living a solutions-based life and being, okay, so if I feel this way, good or bad, and I want to do something about it, what is the solution at this point? You know, and now I'm going to lease my home out and I'm going to go find something. I'm in the process already. And I'm going to go find something a little smaller where I feel, yeah. Comfort. Safe. Yeah. Like, not like I'm waking up and I hear my voice echo. What advice would you have for people as far as blocking the noise? Mm. Are there any tips? Yeah. Um, Figuring out what your core values are and sticking with them. Mm. What what is that inner voice telling you? What do you truly believe in? What do you really want? What are your core, core values in life? And going with that. I feel like when everything goes wrong for me, it's because I've steered away from my authenticity. And it's not, and I mean, I, I recently kind of had a major epiphany. Yeah, where I've been a DJ for fifteen years, and and I still That's love amazing. it. But I mean, it's it's been the best career, and I'm so grateful for it. But the two hours that, or the ninety minutes that I'm actually on stage playing a DJ set. <laughs> That's super fun and amazing, but that's not DJing. The DJing is the preparation time. The DJing is going to the airport. The DJing is sleeping on planes. The DJing is not sleeping. The DJing is drinking. Mm-hmm. It's getting drunk. It's just mm-hmm. and messing up your sleep patterns. I mean, it is such a taxing career to tour professionally. Yeah, and also you have to be up on everything. Everything. Every, all the new music, all the old music. All, yeah. Like, it's a lot. I exactly. It's, it's a lot. It's yeah. not the two glamorous hours that you're on stage. That's a fraction of it. Right. And I found the older I get, the harder it gets because mm-hmm. that's just what happens, you know? Like <laughs> things don't – I can't bounce back like I did when I was 21. I'm making myself sound self sense 70, but – No, no, no. <laughs> I, trust me. I, I just don't. Hangovers are not the same. They're not the same. No, they're not. God, not do you remember same. when you used to be able to go for days and yes. it was like fine? <laughs> Vegas was so easy. Vegas, Vegas was, was so easy. easy. <laughs> if I don't get in and out of Vegas in under 24 hours yes. now, I mean it's Wave like – Wave the white flag. Yeah. Come oh, helicopter man. me out. I don't Please. care. Right. <laughs> Eject. I, yes. I went to EDC and I did EDC, this, got my bags, and oh, went you straight did. back to the airport. 7 a.m. Out. <laughs> yes. Out. Smart. I don't blame do you. Oh, yeah. I don't blame you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. The, especially that city. It'll eat, it'll, it'll eat you alive. Yeah. <laughs> like, absolutely. Stay. But, yeah, so the epiphany kind of was that, oh, shit, I'm getting 
daily migraines. Oh, I'm not recovering. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to my trips as off, as much mm -hmm. as I used to because I used to be really excited for every weekend to roll around to go play my shows. Right. And all of a sudden that went away for me and I was like, why am I not excited? Like I love my job mm -hmm. because I do love the two hours. Mm -hmm. And then I realised I am just beat to shit. I am exhausted. Mm -hmm. So that made me realise that my major priority, that and some health concerns that I've had in the past, is wellness. Mm -hmm. And that led me to this. And then I realised that, you know, that it, this, all this was steering me back onto my path of authenticity, which, which is to be well, mm -hmm. to be rested, to be happy, to prioritise myself Those and my health. Those are core values. And also to go even further than that, family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I don't really feel like a career like that makes it very easy and I know you can relate to this mm -hmm. especially you know living the life that you and being in the marriage you're in mm -hmm. a, a, a career as a touring artist make, and you can as well actually mm -hmm. a career as a touring artist makes it really difficult to have a family it's very hard yeah yeah, yeah I mean scheduling alone it's oh my gosh yeah it was it was very difficult and honestly we handled it as best as as we could yeah um that was like the least of our worries to, wow to be yeah yeah yeah. that's uh, impressive yeah, yeah. It, it was it's my like <laughs> kryptonite <laughs> scheduling <laughs> yeah. So, oh, yeah. help me it's yeah, yeah it's not easy but it was something that we were both on the same page with so it, it made things like a little easy, easier yeah. but to bring a family into that yeah mm. that's a whole other fear yeah that's a whole other situation a whole other layer and yeah that, i get it it's very hard yeah, isn't it interesting when, when you both talk about situations that happen in your life, how your body is reacting yes. to mm. some like the stress or it's kind of triggering. Your body is saying no. And oh yeah, don't you think it's really interesting mm -hmm. that people my, should my listen body, to your body? Mm -hmm. My body said fuck no. <laughs> 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 just, I mean, there's no other way to put it. Like yeah. I, I don't know about you guys, but when it when it gets really bad, my body just slams on the brakes. Yeah, because yeah. our yeah. bodies know when it's it's time. Yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah. It's they just know. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's up to us to listen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So what would you say is next for you? I mean, you, you're entering this really exciting new chapter in your life. What's what's happening what's in next the next year? One? What's five years? What's oh 10 years? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, what's next for Nas? You know, I am building my business. So really taking you, Bloom, up a notch. I can't wait to do more live events with women. Um, that's something I, I would love to do a tour and do some kind of um, – seminar of some sort i actually developed a new workbook on self-discovery oh wow so it's i'm going to start doing workshops and Amazing. so if i i'd love to turn that into something a little bit bigger um also i'm writing my second book which i'm taking my time with so there's Good. no like rush on this i have no timeline but the first one did so well i was like i want to make the second one a bit more personal um, so definitely writing that and I am jumping back into acting. Good it's for something you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm in class and it's just something that I can't let go of. Feeds your soul. Yeah. 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 And I don't, I'm just like ready emotionally. I have so many things now in my pocket that I can use as triggers and fuel as an actress and I'm like, let me use these things. Yeah. Like, yeah. let me let me sh finally show the world what I can do. And it's going to take a lot of work because it's important for me to be taken seriously in that field. Um, but consistency is my friend. So, absolutely, uh, I'm like, I'm there with that. Um, I mean, I I'd, I'd love kids at some point. I see it. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah you oh, know. you'll be an amazing thank mama. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm I'm totally fine with just one. I don't have a right, same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I feel like everybody wants a tribe until they have one, and then like, <laughs> yeah, I'm good at just one oh, or two. One's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be one and a dog. That'll yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. More animals for yeah. sure. <laughs> um, a, a really solid partner. Yeah. Is, is something that I, I hope okay. for. Write down your list. I yeah. did. Oh, I have. I have. Yeah, you have what list. do you look? What are you looking for in, in a new partner? Um, it's really important that our core values are similar. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like if that is not aligned, mm. if we don't value a lot of the same things, um, 
that's not going to work for me. No. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, I feel like timeline is crucial. Like, do you have the same timeline? Exactly. Because that's always been a huge issue for me. Mm. Like, I, I've met people where, oh, yeah, we want the same things, but, you know, I might want it in two years and that person wants it in ten years. Right. And that's just that's not, not going to work. work. It's not going to work. No. No. no, because you're going to be like, what's ha- why isn't this happening? You yeah. Know? Mm. So, yeah, I totally agree with you on that. Um, you know, he, he has to want children. Mm. That's, like, very important. I don't care if he already has kids. I would actually prefer if he did, to yeah. be honest. Um, there's just something about, you know, good fathers are already very nurturing, and I like that in a man. Yeah, and try um, before you buy. You're, exactly. You're see it. I got to see. Yeah. <laughs> try before you buy. Yeah, very exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I love that. Um, so, yeah, kids for sure. Um, someone who's very hardworking and yeah. um, strong and safety is huge for me. Yeah. Mm. I have to feel safe and valued in a relationship. Absolutely. Somebody actually said yeah. to me once something that's really stuck with me and I think it's so true that men need to feel appreciated and women need to feel safe. That is yeah. a thousand percent true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think so. And I think that's that's probably one of the core philosophies that will make a relationship work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. whenever I've been in a relationship with a guy and I've really consciously made them feel appreciated, it's, things have always gone better as long as I feel safe. Exactly. Otherwise, the wheels fall off. <laughs> no, ab- absolutely. So, and also, yeah. hello, guys. When we feel safe, like, we're kind of down to do. Like, oh, yeah. You yeah. know what yeah. I mean? Oh, it's not hard. We'll appreciate <laughs> yeah. you more. Exactly. It's a exactly. give and a go. Exactly. We're yeah. not that complicated. You think we are, but right. we're not. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Just start with safety yeah. and, like, you have us, you know? And it, that's just, that's so important to me. Like, I have to feel safe in order to, to fully be myself and to open up. Um, what is safety for you, though? So I feel like every everyone's different. Like, Ooh, what is a safety? Good question. Also, if the men are listening, they're probably thinking, okay, so i just got to make it feel safe. Oh, How no. do I do that? No, no, what does that look no, no, like? No. <laughs> so sa- safety for me, of course, the foundation is honesty no matter what. Mm. Um, that's a big thing because if, if, is, if you – Catch someone in a lie and the trust is gone. Yeah, it's out the window. Then you're questioning everything and you don't feel safe. Exactly. And then let's say you decide to to work it out and stay. To rebuild that is a whole other situation. Is it even possible? It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very possible. Um, I think it just depends on what it is. Mm. It depends always, on what it is. What did I mm. say? There's like when trust is broken, it's like a mirror. You always see the crack in the reflection. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. There's a crack, and it's kind of like a, a mirror is like yeah. you keep hitting stones at that mirror, and it's just gonna mm-hmm. sh- shatter. Yeah, yeah, we've talked so about true. this. Both of us have been cheated on multiple times, and it's like <laughs> once you find out, it's like it's hard. Yeah. No, no, no. It's it's really it takes hard. A strong Come back to from there, and, and, and it depends on the individual yeah, as well, of yeah. course, exactly. and what it is, and it also depends on your rules in the relationship as yeah. well do you know what I mean and like I think there's a difference between monogamy and trust though like if exactly as you said mm-hmm. if you set rules and it's like okay we're open that's fine exactly but there's no lying then it's possible there's, to have trust there's boundaries yeah there's boundaries yeah. within that openness right? right um so I think yeah it all depends on what the relationship is and what it consists of. Mm. For me, it's only me. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. For me, me it's I'm I could, your world. I could only be monogamous You are my as well. world. <laughs> but, yeah. Other people might feel Make differently. Make me feel safe. I appreciate you and, and this is that's our... It. Together we are one. Hello, welcome. You live on planet Shanina now. <laughs> You're not leaving. <laughs> Don't even look sideways. Oh, yeah. my God, I love that. Do not pass code. Do not click $200. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think Shanina Jail's a bad place to be, but <laughs> Right. I want to be in Shanina yeah. Jail. <laughs> um, as Aladdin says, a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Sorry. Oh wow. Oh, I love it. That's that. for me. <laughs> so No, I, yeah, it just depends on the you know, the relationship. Um what uh go back to your question. It was <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> God, what were we talking? There's no, my ADD. It was. <laughs> I know. I get it too. Safety. Yeah. What safety. Is, what safety. Is safety to yes. me. Okay. Yeah. So, honest, open communication, no matter what. Yeah. yeah. Like even oh if God. even I know communication. It's, it's just why is it so hard? Why is me? Sorry. <laughs> why are men lacking in communication? <laughs> well, I heard that. You know, I think I think a lot of men are afraid. They yeah. don't want to talk about their feelings, and mm-hmm. I feel like maybe. 
maybe I'm I'm just you know uh-huh. giving analysis. Yeah, it's like oh, can't talk about our feelings or well, little boys in previous generations were taught that it's not okay to cry. Yeah, yeah. it's not okay to be weak. And, and that is do you Thank see God. men sitting around talking about their feelings? <laughs> no. That'll be the day. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I, I also think men don't generally want to disappoint us. Yeah. Uh, Yes. You know, yes. they... We actually have a couple of men in the studio. Yeah, I, yeah, I haven't even looked over to see your reactions. But <laughs> <laughs> They're nodding right now. Pretty, <laughs> you know, pretty spot on, yeah. yeah. <laughs> even if they do scandalous things, I they don't want to disappoint us. You know, it's... I don't think for most the intent is to be hurtful. Yeah. You know, mm. it's... They're just don't have the control. You know, it's... Mm. It depends on the man. You know, I'm not speaking for every man. Um... But yeah, being very transparent makes me feel safe. Celebrating who I am at every level. Mm. So accepting me in my darkest, accepting me in my lightest. Absolutely. Accepting me in my gray areas. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Makes me feel safe. Yep. Um knowing that I have someone that is down for the ride. Has your back. Yeah. Yeah. That's really yeah. important. It's really important. Yeah. And, and someone that, and now I'll take this into, you know, my next relationship, who is also solutions based. You know, if we have issues, like, let's sit down and talk about it. Yes. Mm. You know, like, what can we do to better ourselves individually and collectively? That's do really th- important. Do you think that environmental security is important as well? I do. Yeah, yeah I, I, I feel like it depends on what you want out of life. Um, I, I feel like that's all intertwined. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, if you can't, if you're pregnant on the couch and, and he's not keeping the lights on, that's pretty stressful. It is stressful. That doesn't feel safe. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no. It doesn't. And I personally, like, I, of course I need that. Like, yeah. him and I have to be lockstep in, in most everything. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know? And... And that's important too. Um, having the same vision is is important for the relationship. Mm. Is important to me. Yeah. Like, don't settle for less. Mm-hmm. I think that would be take. I think that would be your takeaway from looking at like just your past and mm-hmm. what's happened to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it's something that I don't think will ever leave me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in summary. Honesty, yeah. openness, mm-hmm. being down for the ride, yeah. and having the same vision. Yeah. That's what makes you feel safe. Yeah. And communication. And, yeah. and letting me be my authentic self. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and keeping me accountable. Yeah. Because I'm not perfect. Yeah. So I, I want someone to call me out on my shit. Tell me when I'm wrong. Yeah. You know, in a tactful way, you don't need to be hurtful because I'm not going to come at you that way. Yeah, in a loving way. In a loving yeah. way. Yeah. Um, but I feel like accountability from both partners is very important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually asked a friend of mine recently um, who, he, this, he's a male, mm-hmm. and he uh, he found his now fiancé in his 50s. It took him a long time to find the person. He, as he said to me, I walked Aww. this earth for 50 years before I found my soulmate. Wow. But I found her and it was worth the wait. And I said to him, you know, you've you've been, you've been through a lot to mm-hmm. get here. What advice would you have? Because you have this extremely successful, connected relationship now. Mm-hmm. And he said, honestly, what I learned is it's about two people who are both willing to do the work on themselves to be the best version of themselves mm-hmm. for the other person. Mm-hmm. That's the yeah. key to success. Absolutely. One whole person and one whole person. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Because you can't fix other people you can no. so you just have you to, have to fix accept it yourself. as well absolutely and yeah. it's how can someone love you if they don't love themselves yeah yeah oh i've oh, i've had that a lot <laughs> you yeah. hear that and <laughs> for anyone in a relationship that is the main question i believe don't you think yes yeah. yes like how do you expect your partner to show up when they don't show up for themselves yeah yeah like that and it's unfair when let's say we show up and they don't, it's unfair to both parties in, in my yeah. opinion. That equals burnout yes. really quickly. Mm-hmm. Yes, because now the other person is not is lacking and then the other person is falling short 
which is not helping them evolve. Mm. You know, they're feeling worse and worse about Discouraged themselves. every yes, day. every day. Because they can't show up for themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's very deep. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to be in a successful relationship, start with yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the takeaway. That's a good takeaway. And it takes a lot of work. And I feel like we, if we do it right, we're constantly working on ourselves. Yep. Little yeah. Little by little. Yeah. Oh wow! Oh, yeah, there's a lot. You. There's been a lot of takeaways from this conversation today. Wait. What a what a great conversation this has no, been! Was amazing, Thank and we're so both. grateful for your time. I mean, you're just the most remarkable person, and I feel like you have so much on your plate, both personally and professionally, and you balance it so well and with so much grace. Thank you. And Thank I can you. just see huge things for you, and we're just so grateful for your time Absolutely. today. And I cannot wait to see where you go from here i'll keep you guys posted thank you of and course. thank you guys for having me oh, like thank you uh, it's just when you told me you know you were doing a podcast and like i was like this just makes sense for you guys this is like yeah. the perfect <laughs> fit all across the board yeah thank um, you so for thank you for having me no I think it's, what I take away from this, first of all, I just want to say thank you. And I'm so proud of you. Thank you. It takes a lot of strength for, you know, what you've been through. And not just like on a relationship level, just everything that you've been through in life and your career. And to come out and have the strength and then give it to other people. Mm -hmm. um, not just that, but you're just up leveling in yeah. every way. Thank you. And that's, the, that's the goal. That's yeah. What I'm striving for. Yeah. And I would want a life coach. I don't think I want a therapist Oh, anymore. okay. Really? Yes. Wow. Okay. So, life coach. I want Nazanin. Hang up. I don't know if I can because I'm hearing so <laughs> much about it. Like, wow. But I want, I want a Nazanin in my yeah. house to like, no, you know. We, we will keep you accountable. Yeah. It, it's And everything is just tailored to what you need at the end of the day. So okay. for listeners, how yeah. do they stay in touch with you? What Where can they find you? On Instagram at Nazanin Mandy. Um, if you're interested in a life coach, you can go to youbloom.com. You could also just DM me and I can, you know, She'll show find you where to go. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Fantastic. Well, you'll be getting two DMs this afternoon from us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> thank you both so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you.